Hello, welcome to Getting Started with Scrivener, part four, backing up your Scrivener project, Windows version. I'm Vanessa Keir. One of the most important things you can do to safeguard your work is to make sure that you are saving and backing up regularly. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that for your Scrivener project. So let's go take a look. Okay, so here we are in Scrivener. And before I talk about how to set up your backups, let me just talk about Scrivener's auto save feature. So as with any program on a Windows machine, you can go up to file, save, or do control S to manually save your Scrivener project as you're working. But Scrivener is also set up to automatically save your project if you've been inactive for two seconds. Now, this is really a crucial um, distinction because I was using a different writing software and it was set to auto save after a set amount of time, regardless of whether I was still typing or not. So as my project became larger, the auto save time increased and it would often auto save while I was typing. Well, while it was auto saving, the words I was typing would not appear on the screen. And as the interval became large enough, when the program finished autosaving, it was not putting back those words that I had typed while it was autosaving, which it had done originally. So when the file was shorter, if I typed like three or four words while it was autosaving, they wouldn't appear on the screen, but then after it autosaved, they would appear on the screen. But as the file got bigger, it would somehow lose track of all those words that I was typing while it was autosaving and I was losing work. And I just became so frustrated that I switched over to Scrivener. So if you want to change the interval, you can go up to Tools, Options. And then here it says Save After Period of Inactivity and you can go up or down and then you can also automatically name untitled documents upon saving. So that's very simple. That's just where you set that. And then to set your backup location, you go here. And for security purposes, I always suggest that people keep their working file in one location, such as on your desktop or your laptop, and then you back up somewhere else, such as Dropbox. That way, if something happens to your desktop or your laptop, it gets stolen, it gets corrupted, and you've all of a sudden lost your working file, your backup is in a separate location, and you can still access that if you can find a machine that has Scrivener on it. So on this backup screen, you have um, the tick box, which is automatically checked to turn on the automatic backups. Then you can choose either to back up on project open or back up on project close. And I like to back up at the end of my work session. So I choose back up on project close. You could also back up every time you manually save, but I've trained myself to automatically manually save every few minutes. Um, that way, no matter what program I'm in, I'm not going to lose work because I'm automatically, it's just like a habit, I automatically save. And then you can back up before updating from mobile devices. You can compress um, the backups as zip files, which is slower, but that's what I do because I back up to Dropbox. I have a limited um, storage limit in Dropbox and I want my files as small and compressed as possible. And then I like to have the date and the backup file names. And then you can tell it how many backup files you want to keep. Again, this for me has to do with space and I've almost never had to restore a backup. I've only had to do that maybe once or twice where I made radical changes to a document and had forgotten to take a snapshot of it ahead of time, decided I didn't like the changes and wanted to go back to an earlier version. And then right here is where you set your backup location. Again, you would need to um, decide where you're going to save it, whether it's Dropbox, uh, flash drive, uh, you know, external drive, just make sure that it's going to be in the same location. So if it's in a slot for the, you know, E drive, when you set this up, make sure you always have that backup device plugged into the E drive port. Okay. So now that you've set your backup file location, let's go out to your directory of your files to see what the difference is between your regular project file and your backup file and how to restore from backup.
Okay, so here I am. I'm out in my Windows Explorer, and this is a folder in my Documents um, folder where I store all my online Scrivener course Scrivener projects. And you can see that the way that Scrivener is storing these is that they're all file folders, and in the title, they're ending in .scriv. To get to the actual project file, I would need to double click on one of these. And then you can see here that this is test icons Scriv X, and it's a Scriv X file. That's the file that Scrivener needs. So I would need to double click on that. But this is one of the issues with Windows is that it doesn't recognize Scrivener files from Windows Explorer. So you would not be able to open it directly from here. At least, th again, this is Windows 10. Um, because if you go to More Apps, it takes you to the App Store, and you're not going to find Scrivener there. So to actually open this file, you need to go into Scrivener. And I always tell people that this is what you need to do if you're on the Windows machine. You need to open all of your projects from inside Scrivener itself, not from out anywhere else on your computer. So I'm going to go over to Scrivener. Then what I need to do is go up to File, Open, find my folder for the project I want to open, double click on that to get inside, and then double click on the ScrivX to open it. And there you go. There is the project opened. Again, for Windows, version of Scrivener. Always open your Scrivener projects from inside Scrivener. Now, what about my backup file? So I'm going to go back out to my Windows Explorer. Now, for the sake of this video, I went into my Tools options and changed my backup location to my desktop, and I also unticked the box for compressed zip. So if you don't choose to have Scrivener save your backup as a compressed zip, it saves it as a regular Scrivener um, project folder here. And you can tell that it's a backup file because it has BAK in the title. And you would open this the same way. You would go into Scrivener, and then you would open the file from within Scrivener. But what if you did choose to have your backup saved as a compressed zip? Let's take a look at that. Okay, so here I am out in Dropbox in my Scrivener Backups folder. And as I mentioned earlier, I like to save my backups as compressed zips to save space. So you can tell that this bottom one is a backup file because it has the BAK in it, but it's also a zip file, so it ends in zip. And then as soon as I clicked on this to highlight it, this compressed folder tools extract tab um, became active and we need to extract the files inside this zip in order for Scrivener to be able to read the files. It can't read a zip file. It's going to still be looking for that Scriv X. So I'll click on that. And then the default is to save it in the same location, but we don't want to do that because the whole point of having a restored file is that it's supposedly going to be your new working file. And as I mentioned before, you should never have your working file and your backup in the same location. So I would suggest that we change this to something else. But for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to bother going through that. I'm just going to go ahead and hit extract. Now you'll notice it's copying 64 items, and that's because of the way Scrivener structures itself behind the scenes. It saves all of your items in the binder, etc., as individual files. So don't be alarmed if you have a very big Scrivener project and it says on restore, or if you're syncing with a um, iOS version, that it's syncing thousands of files. That's normal you still are just going to look for a single Scriv X file to open. Now, let's go back up to our Scrivener backups. So we have our zip file at the bottom, and now we have our restored um, project, which is a file folder like we saw before. And again, you click on that, you get the dot .scriv, click on that, 
And then here is our ScribX that we would open from inside of Scrivener. So that is how you would restore a file if, you know, something happened to your working project and you needed a older version. And just one more thing before I end this video is that if you want to do a manual backup um, outside of the automatic on close or open, you can go up to file backup and then you can change the location that you're backing up to. You can back up now to the set location, or you could tell um, Scrivener that this project is going to be excluded from automatic backups. If you're just messing around with a test file, um, as I frequently do when I'm getting ready for these videos or for a course. So that is the end of the video on backing up your project. Again, for security purposes, I strongly suggest that you keep your backup separate from your Scrivener working project. So I hope you found this helpful. Until the next video, happy writing. Bye.